Well, hey everybody, it's Steve at Thousand Year Home. So I am building a house that I believe will last a thousand years. And I'm uh, substantially logging from my own property, which is full of cedars. Uh, and I want to take a quick study because uh, these fence posts that I've been putting in, uh, I believe they're 50 years old. And I've noticed that some of them, they have some insect damage. Now, is cedar impervious to insects? Well, no. <laughs> but it, it's, it's not well liked by most insects. You still can get your... Uh, wood borers, your beetle borers, you could maybe get dry termites, carpenter ants, I've seen those in it. So, uh, but as I was pulling these uh, fence posts out, out of a hundred fence posts, I encountered about three or four that had insect damage. And at a glance, I didn't even see if they're cedars. It's possible that somebody had cut a mesquite or an oak and stuck it in while the uh, pioneer ranchers were doing this work. So here's one that I replaced and it has some insect damage on it. And I wanna take a look at that. In addition, I'll go up and down and I'll find some of the logs I've already pulled out, post I pulled out. We'll take a look at it. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of termites, right? And the Formosan ones are the ones that I'm mostly worried about uh, that come in big swarms and um, you know, they can nest not with soil contact. But we already have dry wood termites in Texas that don't need it. So the Formosans are just a bolt on to our problems. Um, my house I built with um, uh, only two kinds of wood. Either it's pressure treated or it's cedar. And most of the time if it's cedar, I went ahead and stripped the, the white sapwood off, which is what they seem to be able to eat. And um, got down to the hardwood. Or, um, I've, and or, I've treated everything with boric acid, which is safe for your environment. You could spray it on, it dries, you're done, you drywall over the top of it. That's what I did. I just sprayed everything, even the cedar, with boric acid. Now, for termites to get established, a queen would have to land. She would have to track over the top of uh, the boric acid. She'd have to eat into the hardwood cedar and uh, survive all of that. And of course, cedar has essential oils and phenols and turbines and things like that uh, that kill insects. So I think that, uh, and there are already thousand year cedar houses, but let's take a look at some of these posts that have been here doing the test of time and see what kind of insect damage we see in there and just kind of get an idea of the kind of things that would show up inside of a cedar house. All right, here is an old post that I, I'm going to use and I've noticed it looks like this thing came from the coast. There are, there are something inside of it, either that sap that came out of insect holes or it was, uh, those are, um, I don't know, clamshells? It's just, I'm not sure what these things are. Um, and then as I go down, now I reuse this because it's six inches of solid. But when I get down here to the sapwood, you can see that uh, insects did indeed eat the sapwood component. So what I'm going to do is I have to chop the top off of this log anyway. Let's chop it off and take a look at the hardwood underneath. I believe this post is, and I pulled it out of the ground, right? So this thing has been sitting in full ground contact. I'm going to guess every bit of 30 years, if not 50 years. Let me go ahead and put a chainsaw on it, and you and I will do a discovery and see what we see. When you have an old post, go ahead and cut it at a little bit of an angle, and that way the water will come off of it faster, and, and or paint the tops or treat the tops. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cut this at an angle, and we'll take a look at what we see. All right, so there was my fresh cut. It's hard to get through that. <laughs> that chain might need to be sawed, and then I touched my fence a little bit, so now it'll have to be sharpened. All right, so look at that. That thing's 50 years old. Wherever the sapwood has been removed, I don't see any insect damage in there. Let's take a look here. Look at this, for example. You can see where earth, uh, like I said, I pulled this out of the ground. Subterranean termites had made a, uh, you know, t uh, tubes on it. You can see those, right? Hopefully it's all focused. And, uh, you know, so, oh my gosh, this thing has termites. And it sure does. It sure does on the sapwood inside the heartwood of cedar nothing nothing they do not like the heartwood of cedar so when I take a look up and down the outside of this 
you'll see that the indeed the termites are getting in there and they're destroying this the uh, sapwood so uh, if I were to build a house for somebody else I think I would still want my cedar logs uh, temperature and pressure treated maybe not pressure treated with chemicals but at least hot housed right I'd want them um, uh, baked at 140 degrees for two days at the very least and that should get rid of them the other thing people do is they freeze stuff if you had a big block of cedar and a chest size freezer you could freeze it for two weeks probably would kill the termites let me take a look at a couple of other posts that i saw out here that i pulled out that had rotted at the ground and cedar's not magic wood uh, it'll still rot given the right conditions but let me let me drum up a few of those well, I'm not a big fan of the cattle using the edge of the fence as their resting place. They're just trying to get the shade from underneath these trees. But, you know, I'm, I'm working on this fence. <laughs> Come on now, shoe. And uh, having a bunch of cattle up hard against it isn't what I want. I'm going to get, is that the bowl? Is he just going to lay there and make me pretend that I got to go around? You're not going to move, are you? You're not going to move. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll go around you. How about that? You just stay right there. Don't get up. Stay right there, I'll, I'll go around you. Okay, so here's a, a post that's solid, but you could see that I have an ant on it. Uh, we call these crazy ants because they run around, uh, but I think they're also called acrobat ants. Now again, I'm gonna guess that they're not anywhere in the uh, anywhere in the uh, hard stuff I bet you anything they're they're coming out of the soft stuff let me uh, just score this up a little bit yeah they're not hard stuff now these will bore out a living tree uh, they're not a big problem in Texas but they they do like power boxes so they they get into your power and they cause problems so this post if you take a look at it it's uh, it's rock solid. <laughs> there is still that much of a post to it, which is about four to five inches. I don't know if these can sting. Let me see if they sting. Well, I only feel them crawling. I, I don't feel any stings or anything. So they're not fire ants, that's for sure. But they are wood boring. Uh, now, I don't know if they use termite holes. I don't know anything about this, but there you go. So that's uh, that's one thing that's living inside of uh, cedar posts. But again, it's only living in the, uh, if I took a look, in the white sapwood that's uh, rotting off of this hardwood. Let me see. I'll get the hatchet again, and we'll, we'll chop through until I hit hardwood. There you go. See? I'm hitting hardwood. All right, so the hardwoods, <laughs> it's just what it sounds like in cedar. That, and as you saw, it was hard for me to cut through that with my, uh, with my uh, chainsaw. I mean, so that's why I'm only pulling a few of these out. So I've got another one here. This one also might be, um, uh, also might be from the acrobat ants, but this here, is uh, I saw mud tunnels on it, so I know termites are on it. But uh, originally, I was just going to take it back to the truck and, and do a little demo there. But the nails <clears throat> that I was pulling out of there are still substantially hard. I want you to see how I uh, how good this post would be if it hadn't rotted off at the ground. Now, I already started pounding away at this thing to get these old staples out of there, 50 year old staples out. And uh, I want you to see that uh, this is ha halfway, the staple's halfway removed. I'm telling you, I was full swinging as hard as I could, but I'll do, I'll do something since uh, the replacement log right behind it 
is also cedar. When I drill this out, I'll go ahead and pour borax acid, powdered borax in, in the hole next to the hole, and that way it'll suppress whatever insect it was coming up through and maybe buy me some time. So this one you see doesn't have a lot of, uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, sapwood around it, but it does have this knot, and wherever there's knots, then moisture stays. So uh, it's not a perfect post, but it'll outlast me. Uh, you know, I'll die before it will rot, I bet. Somebody else can fix it. Then every three or four or five years, I'll walk this fence line, I'll find a, the post that have done this, and I'll go ahead and pull those out and. Uh, replace them. This is a, a restorative project that I'm doing right now. Restoring an old fence that's 50 years old that's probably been neglected the entire time. So, uh, and then the cattle are smart enough to keep going to wherever my posts are down and hanging around there. So I think that that's a, they're drawn to that change. So getting a post back in there as fast as I can is definitely what I'm after. I do remove the bark from the logs before I put them underground and ultimately I'll, I'll probably peel all the bark off when I get time but I'm underneath a time crunch here to get this uh, all in in addition it's it's super dusty and awfully hot and so I'm having a hard time breathing so I can only work so long before I run out of wind <laughs> all right well that one will go back next to it let's cut let's cut these up and see what's inside I can't figure out if that's a big old bull or if that's a female gonna give birth. Usually the bulls have uh, marks on them, but uh, I can't figure <laughs> I can't can't figure out what it's sitting on. All right, but it's uh, 15 feet from where I'm working, so if he takes exceptions to me, I'll have to move. All right, so I'm gonna continue on with the little experiment I pulled. Two of the logs who fell down uh, out of the fence row. This was the one next to the crazy ants. This one was just one that I found along the, the fence row. In addition, most of these that are broken are broken where an oak tree had fallen and went through the fence and snapped it off. So, but what I want to do, uh, since I'm building a thousand year house out of cedar, cedar I want to take a couple of cross sections off of both of these and see what insects we might see in the uh, hardwood if any uh, this is the worst case scenario ground contact both of these broke off right where the ground contact was and I just want to see what kind of things I should uh, prepare for well that is definitely some kind of an insect infestation uh, I can't believe that that would be termites I would guess that that would be uh, well, it is dry rot. You know what? Now that I've pulled it out a little ways, there's uh, a growth inside of it all, like a, a fungal growth. It seems to be dry rot. I'm going to cut it, I don't know, this far up. Let's take a look at it there. Yeah, that's that wasn't uh, insect infestation. That was entirely uh, dry rot. So, you know, you don't want water getting exposed over and over and over. And the posts that rotted, maybe they were underneath an uh, oak tree where the drip line was constantly on it and I had a lot more moisture on it. Now, naturally, uh, insects could be getting in that, right? They have a house now since it's dry rotted a little bit. And of course, I can't turn this into anything. This kind of thing also happens in old cedars. It's called pencil rot, um, where there's a crack up at the top and then the wood, water gets into the center of the tree and rots it out. It's not just cedars. Any tree can get pencil rot, where it rots out the heart of it, uh, usually because of water egress. But um, we'll take a look at that. I'm looking at the outside of this thing. It was definitely termites were eating the outside of it. In fact, you could see some of their, you know, old carcasses in there. Maybe ants, I'm not sure. They're black. Some of the carcasses I saw were black, but that could be just from age. But the rest of it looks like, you know, earth tunnels, dirt tunnels that termites would do. 
All right, well, I'm gonna call dry rot on this one. More than insect damage. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. It, it's, it's very, it looked like insects because of the outside where the sapwood was, but the insect damage pretty much stopped right there. You know, as soon as I knock away and get down to the heartwood, there's no wood boring insects in that at all. So, all right, should I do one more cut? Another eight inches up? Let's do another cut eight inches up. Up another eight inches from that. And, uh, you know, it does look like it was maybe where a branch had come in and the water was able to come down in. But again, no insect damage at all. So I'm going to call this entirely dry rot from uh, excessive water exposure. And on the outside, I'm going to say that there was an infect, insect infestation. There's something right there. Hold up, it blew away before I could get a picture of it. Aha! A little beetle. See the little beetle right there? So I don't know what that is. I'll have to look him up. I've understood that um, stink beetles can get in, but he might just be hiding out here as a convenient home. I mean, he maybe didn't ever drill into this thing at all. I don't know what that little shiny beetle was. It's uh, hard to decide what was insect damage and what was just things taking advantage of the dry rot, to be honest. But certainly, nevertheless, when you get to the hardwood, all that nonsense stops. All right, let me grab the next post. I'll make one cut on it. Now, would I make boards out of this? I don't know. You know, I have hundreds of cedars. Why even risk it, right? <laughs> Seriously, why would I risk it? Y'all seeing me? Yeah. Same situation I see, but I, I right away see that there's fungal growth along the edge. I could clearly see that, uh, you know, something got in there and other than uh, insects and was rotting this soft, this uh, sapwood. So this is that post that I had pulled the nails out of and you saw that it was still uh, super hard. In addition, I can clearly see there's termite earthen tunnels here. So subterranean termites were crawling up, going in, and then, uh, you know, I did find right away, I found uh, dry rot um, on the surface that included uh, mushroom, right? Some kind of a fungal growth. All right, so let me go ahead and chop it right about there and see what we see a little ways up. Already you can see that it's getting difficult for the, uh, whatever the insects were, to find their way. They're picking paths, like they're picking this. And you can even see here, let me get the camera up. See that the termites were building a, a mud channel up, trying to get up to where the wood was rotted enough they could eat it, but they skipped all of this. And uh, you know, I would say it's even difficult for termites to eat the sapwood initially, but uh, you can see the hardwood post is still there, and that's why the staples were so hard to get out, and uh, most of the um, sapwood was still in there. Very good. Well, thank you for joining me for this uh, uh, real world in C2 look uh, field experiment of cedar. Again, it's been here 30 to 50 years. Uh, out of the 100 posts, I had three that were rotted. Uh, the other ones were clearly broken from either a bulldozer or uh, an oak fall on them or a tree fall on them. And then this is six inches, you know, that's where it rotted off. Six inches down, the post is already getting solid. So my idea of, of logging right out of here, and again, I'm not uh, uh, heating anything inside of a uh, oven, you know, and, and cooking it for a couple of days at 140, which would kill all insects. 
but um, I'm going to be fine. If I cut a log and I see insect damage, especially in the heartwood, I'm not going to choose to bring that into my property. I've got hundreds of cedar logs here to pick from, so I just set that one aside. I uh, use it as a poster. Or something. I don't know. I probably wouldn't use it at all. Uh, there's plenty to pick from that's not insect treated. But look, I mean, cedar is naturally resistant. This is the worst of all situations. And uh, there, the performance is there. I mean, buried in the ground, untreated, uh, exposed for years to the rain, thaw, flood cycle. And um, other than where the the fungal growth got going and the dry rot was able to sustain. And again, this was underneath a tree, so it was shaded longer and whatnot. Out of the hundreds of posts, this was it. And then you saw the other, I had another post that had uh, acrobat ants all over it, uh, crazy ants. And um, uh, I don't know if those are wood boring or if they just adopt, but again, you treat those, you don't want those. They didn't sting me, but again, they get in your electrical system and short that out. All right, well, there we go. So what will I do on the fence posts that are next to uh, termite damage, known termite damage? Well, I'm simply, after I dig them out, going to fill them up with a little bit of uh, powdered borax and then uh, strip the bark off so that the insects don't have protection and then just stick a new post back in. I'm not even going to treat the new post any further than that. That's all I'm going to do. All right, this is Steve of Thousand Year Homes. Thank you for watching my little experiment on cedar and how long that can it last. And uh, I know that I could get a thousand years. The, these posts uh, prove it because these are worst case situation and a best case situ situation in a roof where it's dry it's never changing. It'll stay there as long as your, the house is and as long as it's not exposed to the elements. Uh, as I did that video and, and uh, mixed it, I realized I, I want to do a little bit more of a wrap up here. So uh, the thing that I use to treat for termites is borax. And I said boric acid several times, but I meant borax right out of the grocery store. You just mix it up with some water, spray it on or uh, put it on directly. I understand they mined this somewhere and that's why it said 20 mule team on it, right? Uh, at Meteorite or something created borax. Um, but anyway, uh, the other thing I do like, is uh, I go ahead and I strip the bark off, um, at least uh, where I'm putting it in the ground, but I prefer to strip it all the way off. That way it doesn't have a home for termites right away uh, for them to even get into the sapwood. I'm going to guess that that's going to buy five or ten years of life on the post. And the last thing that I thought of is um, the sapwood itself. You've got the hardwood here, then you've got the sapwood. I think that that acts like a, a sacrificial anode. I honestly do. Um, so my, my idea is uh, it takes insects a long time to chew that up. In the meanwhile, it's keeping the rain and the elements off of the hardwood. So, you know, if you put these in some kind of a machine that would strip them down to hardwood, that's what you would want inside of a house where it's super decorative. But maybe outside in uh, in the wilderness, maybe this is the right methodology. Of put, it, put it into um, the ground with the sapwood on it, with the understanding that the sapwood will slowly erode and take the hit while the post itself, the hard post itself will stay. So that's my two cents on that. Anyway, I, I wanna encourage homesteaders to log their own stuff. This um, saved me a huge amount of money. Um, it does take a little while to, to peel the log, <laughs> as much time as to cut it down. So there's a little sacrifice of time in there. But you know, this fence will outlast me and has outlasted uh, whoever put it in, I'm sure. I'm saying 50 years old. There's no guarantee this isn't a 75-year-old fence. I don't know. But uh, at any rate, here it still stands. Here it, here it still stands. A testament, right, to the uh, do-it-yourselfer and the durability of cedar and its ability to preclude incense insects the only things we saw were some acrobat ants and i did look them up those were acrobat ants crazy ants are similar but they're uh, import and uh i've seen a certain kind of longhorn boar beetle in some of them and i've seen uh 
you know, down through the years. And I've seen carpenter ants down through the years. And of course, termites on the surface. That's very little insect damage. The, these posts should have been at up and they weren't. So I did want to do a quick summary on all of that and just say the kind of insects I saw uh, and let you know they were acrobat ants in there. And acrobat ants don't bore, they take over. They nest, but they I'm right about them getting into electrics, uh, electrical stuff. They do. So you got to keep them away from your house. Um, carpenter ants and the wood borer. That's it. So uh, anyway, uh, cedar, I, I think I'm building a thousand year house by, by logging my own logs. When I find the big ones, those are the ones that are going up in my ceiling, right? But these little fence post sized ones, I'm clearing out from underneath the oaks. So all the oaks will end up looking. All right. Heritage oak, it, it breathes its own air, it drinks its own water. Uh, you know, even here in the woods, you know, that one that I cleared out looks much more comfortable. Uh, you know, I'm getting there where I'm clearing them all out. So that's my wrap up. So like, subscribe, follow me along. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Thank you. Bye.